Tibetan Scholarship Program offers Tibetan students from India and Nepal the opportunity to pursue higher education in the United States. To speak more on the program, I have Tenzing Khando from Tibet Fund and Tenzing Chogden from CTA's Tibetan Computer and Resource Center. Tash Dile, Chogden La and Khando La, it's really nice having you both here. Tash Dile. So before I start with the interview, I would like to say that uh, Tenzing Khando La is a TSP alumni who has completed her master's degree in public health from George Washington University. And Tenzing Chogden La recently got selected for the program and will be pursuing his master's degree in cybersecurity at Georgia Institute of Technology. So Khando La, to start with you, what is Tibetan Scholarship Program and what are the facilities provided by this program? Um, thank you, Sakinala, for having us on the show. Um, Tibetan Scholarship Program, popularly known as the TSP, is a program that is funded by the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs at the U.S. State Department and is uh, collaboratively administered by the Tibet Fund and the Department of Education here at CTA. Uh, every year under this program, approximately six students from India and one student from Nepal are funded uh, to pursue master's degree in the United States. Every year, the number of seats and number of candidates differ according to the availability of the fund. And uh, this scholarship program is a fully funded uh, program because um, it not only covers your tuition cost, but also covers your um, daily expenses such as your travel costs, your uh, book allowances, and also um, covers your monthly stipend. And I think uh, all of these uh, resources and um, uh, expenses are covered for the whole two academic year. Okay, so you said that every year there are um, seven students, seven applicants who will be selected to go to the U.S. So every year, how many Tibetans do you think applies for this program? Mm, the number varies every year, but approximately over eight, 80 to 90 students apply every year for this scholarship. But it differs every year, so. So, um, Chogdan La, how can one apply for the program? What academic credentials are required by the applicants to be a part of this program? Uh, first of all, thank you, Sakina La, for welcoming both of us on this show. As far as the application is concerned, um, uh, one can apply through online uh, Google form to be specific. Mm -hmm. So the Department of Education normally makes the announcement by the end of the year. Along with the form submission, one has to, since this is uh, since Tibetan, yeah, Tibetan scholarship, so the first criteria is you being a Tibetan. And then along with that, uh, the basic documents required are uh, your green book, uh, IC, and RC up to date. And then as far as academic uh, credentials are concerned, you need to have at least uh, four years of degree in, in India. And for those students who have completed a three years degree, they need to have an additional of one year uh, to complete the entire uh, like four years degree. So, um, but on top of this, so we we'll need to write a short essay for the TSP. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would suggest the future applicants to really consider this important because this would later help uh, when you write the main statement of purpose for when you apply for the universities abroad. Okay, so is there an age limit to apply for this program? Uh, yes, so the age limit is 35 years and below. So Kantula, how important do you think returning back after completing the program is and how is it affecting the future TSP applicants? I personally think that it is very, very important that you come back after completing your degree in the United States. Uh, personally, uh, because ethically it is important uh, because uh, you have been blessed with this opportunity under the blessing of His Holiness. So every aspiring student who wish to apply for this scholarship deserves the same opportunity that you did. So I think uh, in that way it is very important, but also in past uh, several years there have been cases where students who were selected uh, but their visas were rejected because the past candidates did not return back after completing their school. So in order to avoid the risk of uh, visas being rejected and also the scholarship being cancelled by the U.S. State Department, it is very important that you complete your school and return back home and serve your community for at least two years. Yeah, so what are the conditions applied on an applicant uh, to make sure that the applicant comes back after completing his or her program from the United States? 
So once you are selected for the program, um, you are required to sign a bond agreement at the Department of Education, where you will be uh, you will be advised to have three uh, witnesses uh, to uh, sign the agreement with you, and also uh, this will make sure that the students, once they're they have done with their school, they come back and serve the community for at least two years. So uh, Chogdan Lessons, you have been recently selected for the program. Can you tell us what preparations are required during the process and what are the procedures? So before I answer that question, I would like to add on Ms. Kando's uh, uh, remark on the returning of the TSP yeah, uh, sure. as applicants. Mm -hmm. So like, <coughs> uh, like our batch recently went for the visa interview. So our visa interview was really smooth. And then the, the visa counselor uh, already knows about the Tibetan scholarship program. So uh, our process was, uh, compared to other students over there, like, you know, our uh, process was really, really smooth. So I would urge the future applicants to really come back uh, because it really helps the, the current uh, students who are going for the visa interview. So the visa application went smooth only because uh, the recent return rate was good? Yes. All right. Um, and to answer your uh, question uh, earlier, so there's two stages. There's the uh, pre-selection process and then there's the uh, post-selection process. Mm -hmm. So in the pre-selection process, uh, first, uh, all the applicants have to sit for the GWTT. That's the General Written uh, Tibetan Test. Mm -hmm. So after you've cleared the GWTT, then you have to sit for uh, ITP TOEFL. So that's the institutional test program. That is different from the TOEFL uh, IPT, which mm -hmm. is the internet-based test. So for that, you have to give the exam in person. So once you have cleared both this exam, then uh, based on your academic performance in your bachelor's and master's degree, mm -hmm. uh, the top 30 students will be selected. So these top 30 students will then be interviewed, and then the, the selection panel is chaired by the uh, US officer at the public affairs mm -hmm. in, uh, in India and Nepal. So from these uh, top 30, six students will be selected from India, and one student will be selected from Nepal. So what preparations were required? What do you have to prepare for? For the GWTT, uh, the, uh, the exam is from uh, 50 marks. So the exam is, consists of Tibetan history, Tibetan politics, Tibetan uh, general knowledge. And then the last section is a translation in which you have to translate from uh, English to Tibetan. And then for the post-selection, like Ms. Kandila has you know, previously mentioned, once you've cleared the interview, you have to sit for TOEFL IPT and the minimum score required is 85, mm -hmm. and then you have to sit for a GRE that is required for the universities abroad. All right. So, Khandrula, you have already experienced the program. You've got educated and you've studied about public health, and now you're here working at Tibet Fund. So, can you tell us what was your experience like and what changes have you seen in yourself after completing the program? Personally, uh, those two years of uh, pursuing graduate school in the United States has truly really been a uh, worthy and life-changing experience for me because having done my schooling from Tibetan school and then experiencing a total different uh, cultural environment and a new educational system was very challenging at first, but later on it was worthy, I think, because it helped me grow as a person and helped me develop my professional and personal growth. I think those two years have uh, really helped me uh, not just academically but also I was able to be a part of various student organizations such as International Students Association and also was able to intern at the DC Department of Health where I have developed uh, a lot of public health skills that I think is now useful because I now work as a public health specialist at the Tibet Fund and um, those two years have truly been uh, remarkable for me. Seems like Kantula had a very productive and a wonderful experience. So what about Chogdanla? What are your expectations and what are your plans after you return back from the program? So the two years of master's program will allow me uh, a specific time to do uh, intensively research on APD threat intelligence and uh, network security. So there are really good professors in my university at Georgia Institute of Technology like Mustaq Ahmed, uh, Alexa Hata, and Paul Pierce. So their research on um, binary analysis and then threat detection mitigation are really interesting to me. And then these are research that are normally I am interested in and, and I work at TCRC for. So I plan to use this opportunity and uh, to become more self-reliant and then using the knowledge and the experiences I will receive under these professors, I plan to come back and lead 
the TCRC Forensic Lab in a much capable manner and thereby enhancing the cyber security of CTA and Tibetan communities in exile. So you got into Georgia Institute of Technology, which is one of the most renowned uh, university in terms of um, cyber, security. cyber security. So do you get to make your own selections when it comes to selecting your own university? So applicants can uh, give their preferred choices so to the uh, Tibet, fund, uh, Tibet Fund coordinator. The Tibet Fund uh, will try its best to uh, facilitate your uh, request and place you in your preferred choice. But at the same time, as Ms. Kandula has previously mentioned, that Tibet Fund operates on a very tight budget from the U.S. State Department. So I would suggest students to uh, have a backup list of uh, at least three to four universities. Uh, yeah. All right. So uh, to follow up with the questions um, that I have asked you before, I would just like to know that if you have a Ph.D. degree or an MPhil degree, would you still be eligible to apply for the Tibetan Scholarship Program? So in that case, I don't think you're eligible for the TSP program. Uh, you need, uh, the, until master's degree, you're eligible. But after master's, you're not eligible for the TSP program. All right. So, um, Kandula, I would like to ask that uh, whenever the announcements happen, like Chognala, he has already mentioned um, before, saying that the announcements um, are made by CTA's Department of Education at the end of every year. So if an individual needs to know and if an individual needs to apply for the Tibetan Scholarship Program, get information about the Tibetan Scholarship Program, where can he or she go to? Yeah, uh, so in order to apply for a TSP uh, scholarship, you'll have to go to the Tibet.net website or the Department of Education website, and uh, there will be a deadline every year. Uh, so normally the deadline for the submission of application is in March, and every year the dates are tentative. Like Kantula, you have said that out of you know, 80 to 90 people, at the end there are only seven people who get selected for the program. And I'm sure that it must not have been an easy journey for both of you. You must have gone through a lot of preparations during the procedures. So what was the most important thing that you have experienced during the preparation process? And what advice would you like to give the future uh, Tibetan Scholarship prog uh, Program applicants so that it'll become, you know, a little easier or like they'll know more about it before they apply? So, Kandula. Yeah, uh, so personally, I felt that being uh, up to date with the timeline of the mm -hmm. scholarship was very important uh, because once you have missed the deadline for suppose like application submission, you are not able to apply for that. So, uh, being up to date with the scholarship timeline is important, and I think uh, one way we can help them is. Uh, as a TSP Alumni Association uh, member, I think uh, having workshop for those uh, future candidates in order to orient them towards the timeline of the scholarship is important. Chugdala, what about you? Based on your experience, what advice would you like to give? So based on my experience, the first thing, the, the most important thing is, as Ms. Kandula has mentioned about the deadlines, so uh, the deadline is uh, one of the most important thing. Based on my experience, uh, the most challenging thing for me was selecting which university I want to go. So, um, so I would uh, suggest the future applicants to really take that time uh, into which university they want to go. And then uh, I have like small two advice. Uh, number one is uh, the SOP, the Statement of Purpose. Mm -hmm. So when you apply for the universities abroad, so Statement of Purpose is like your first interaction with the university and the professors in terms of uh, who you are as a person and then and like why the universities should accept you uh, as, an, an, as an applicant, right? So I would uh, really urge the future applicants to really take their time into, into studying the university, the professors, uh, their research interests, if they are in line with yours, and then really take their time. And then each individual has their own unique experience. Uh, so based on that, they should really take their time into uh, writing the statement of purpose for their particular uh, university. So writing a specific SOP for a specific university it was really important according to my experience. And the second thing is my bachelor's academic performance is very average. I was not a bright, very bright student back in university. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, I got into a really uh, prestigious university. And I believe this is because of my work experience at CTA for the past nine years. So for those students who have an average to low kind of a academic performance, they should not be disheartened. They should always aim for a better university. And one way that I have on my experience is that they should fill the gap of academic by doing work or work related to their 
uh, to the academic and then it could be anything from you know uh, for working for CTA or any or anything mm -hmm. so I would really suggest them to take their time and uh, uh, like prepare early in terms of uh, for that yeah, that's a wonderful advice, Shubhmanla, and it's really nice to know that these days the new universities, they don't just go by your ac uh, academic uh, percentage and all of that, but also by your work experience. And congratulations to both of you for being selected into such a renowned uh, program, Tibeta Scholarship Program. Uh, Kantula, you have already experienced and you are back here. And uh, Chodana, you will be leaving very soon. So I wish you all the best. And I really hope to see you come back with the same uh, wonderful and the same productive experience like the one Kantula had. I Thank hope you so. so much. Uh, thank you so much to both of you for coming here at Tibet TV and speaking to us. Thank you for having thank us. You. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next episode of In Conversation with Tibet TV.